this video will show you the basics of creating a file in Smart Notebook. To open Smart Notebook, um, if you go up to the magnifying glass in your top right corner, you can um, type in Notebook and it should pop up. If you need to update to Smart Notebook, um, that is also referenced in the module um, and you can find that update in Self Service. So in Smart Notebook, it opens up and you will see um, all of these buttons at the top and then some buttons on the left hand side and we will be working through most of these buttons in this short tutorial. So on the page, um, you can when you have the pointer selected, that will be to click anything. So if you want to click to go to a different tab, you'll want the pointer selected. The pin options are below. So you have some different options. You have a pin, you have um, you know, highlighter, paintbrush, crayon, different things like that that will give a different effect when you write. So just so you can see a few different things. So the highlighter will be, um, you know, words can show through. So if you wanted to have a piece of text and then you wanted to highlight that text, you can also change and customize the colors here. And then also the thickness of your line. You can do this as well from the, from your smart board, or you can do it just in the software on your computer. The other button here is to insert shapes. So you can have some different shapes and insert different shapes in here. Just to show you some examples of some of the shapes that there are. And then you can do um, different things with the shapes. So I have clicked the shape to select it and you see in the top right corner you have this drop down menu. So if you click in the drop down there are several options for you. You can clone the shape and if I click that you see that it duplicates so it's kind of like a duplicating feature. You can cut, copy, paste, and delete which are commands we're all familiar with. Then you can have an infinite cloner. What an infinite cloner does, it means that it will clone it an infinite number of times when you drag from the image or the text that you are trying to do an infinite clone on. So I'm going to show you an activity here in a few minutes where you can do this to create um, an alphabet or a number tray where you can drag numbers and letters out for students to do different activities. You can also lock. So you can lock this in place, allow a vertical move, which means it can move up and down on the page, allow a horizontal move, which means it can move left and right on the page, allow move and allow move and rotate. So if you lock it in place, now when I click it, you see I have the, it pops up with this little lock, and I can't move that. If you go back to the lock, you then have the option to unlock so that you can always go back and you can change things afterwards. You can link it to a pen tool eraser tool or a different tool that you select. You can flip it, so if you want to flip left right, it'll flip directions, or if you want to flip it up and down, it will flip directions that way as well. You can also reorder and arrange the image in a different place. You can link it, so you could add a hyperlink to it, add a sound, and then properties, you can add some other properties to it and do some different effects. Change the line style so we can make it really fat. We could change the color of it. And then we can animate the object as well so we can make it do different things. Also, when you have the image selected, you see that you have this green dot on the top that you can use to tilt the image. And in the corner, you can enlarge it or make it smaller. So you have those options as well. To add a page, because I've kind of filled up this page showing you different things, so to add a page, we will click this button right here. That's a page with a little green plus. And you'll see on your outline on the left, you will have another page appear that's blank. 
The next thing I want to show you is the letter option here. So if you select the letter A icon, you'll see that you have all of these different letters. Um, so you can type. You can also change the font, change the size, um, and change the color, change the formatting, bold, italicized, underline, all of those different features that you like in, when you're adjusting your font. And so if we click, it will type a letter, and I'm going to click a new box for each letter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an alphabet tray. So I'm going to arrange my letters here at the top. And you would, of course, you know, you'd create a box for every letter in the alphabet. And then you can organize your alphabet across the top or down the side somehow where the students can see all of the letters. So then you would have your entire alphabet here, you know, towards the top, or maybe you want it on the sides. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the infinite cloner option. So I'm going to go to the pointer and I am going to click and it will give me the infinite cloner option. You see whenever, um, whenever I'm in the text option, if I click, Infinite cloner is not an option I have here. It's grayed out. So I'm going to go back to the pointer, click, and then I will have the option to do the infinite cloner. So I'm going to click infinite cloner. And now when I select the A, it has this infinity symbol in the top right corner. I'm going to do the same for these letters. And then I'm going to show you some different things that you can do. So if you had your entire alphabet cloned with the infinite cloner, what that does is it lets you pull an infinite number of letters out of that original letter. So then you can just delete those or erase those on your screen. And so what you'll do when students are working in a document, let's say you have your alphabet tray, and you want to have students practice spelling words. So you want them to spell the word bad. So they would pull down the B, they would pull down the A, and pull down the D. Or they could spell the word cab, and pull down the C, and the A, and the B. And you see that all of your letters up here, your original letters, are going to stay there forever and the students will not be able to move those and will not be able to adjust those. The next options you see up here are this box, which are for regular polygons. And so that will show you, so you have an eight-sided, an octagon, you have a hexagon with 10 sides, um, and you have your different options there. So if you wanted to work with students on how many sides are in different objects and what those objects are called. You can do that. You can then color the objects a certain color. Um, so if we wanted to have, you know, to make a stop sign, we could have, oops, let me go back to my octagon there. Uh, we could have a red filled octagon. There. Then you have some line features, so you can do different lines, you can do different uh, arch lines and different things, you can do some different double arrowed lines if you wanted to create some word webs or flow charts or anything like that. You have the fill options, so this can be used with any shape that you put into a Smart Notebook file. You can fill it from there, and then erasing. So you can erase um, if you have colored, you know, a, used the crayon to fill in your hex or your octagon, then you can erase that. The last thing I want to show you are the different tabs on the side. So if you go to the second tab, that's for the gallery. And so you can search for different clip art pictures and different things that you can insert directly into your 
smart notebook documents, you can also search things. So let's say I wanted to search, I wanted to do a money sorting activity with my students or a math lesson that used money. So I'm going to um, pick up, and it's not giving me very many, when I search coins, it's not giving me very many options. So let's search money and we'll see if we have any more come up when we do that. Okay, so this has a lot more pictures here. Okay, so we have, we even have, you know, these coins are from another country, and so we're scrolling through and we're looking for our currency. Okay, so here's some U.S. currency, um, and you could search penny, nickel, quarter, and it, it will pop right up for you, but let's say I want to pull in a penny, I want to pull in a nickel, a dime, and a quarter. And you could even do the infinite cloner option. So if you wanted to do an activity where students could make change, so you could give them a math problem that you pay for an item that is $3.75 and you um, give them four, $4, how much change do you get back? or you pay for an item that is, you know, $7.25, you give them $8, what change could you get back? And so then if you did the infinite cloner, they could drag, I would get back three quarters for 75 cents. And then that would be their math problem that they could do. And then you can do the same for every coin. You can do the infinite cloner. So then students can pull the money and make their own math problems. Or you could show them, okay, we have a dime, or I'm sorry, a nickel, a quarter, and a dime. plus two quarters and then have the student do the math and tell you what the total is. So that would be 75, 85, 90 cents. So then the student can write 90 cents there as the answer. So that's an idea of how you can use clip art to do some more interactive lessons and do different things across, um, you know, to, to bring in math and science and, and those different aspects. Um, for science, you could do the earth and you could, you know, you could pull in a picture of the earth or pull in the picture of, pull in a picture of if you can find one of the earth's layers. Um, some things, there will be some different, okay, yep, this is perfect. So here are some different pictures of the Earth's layers. So you could have, pull up these pictures, and then this one, you know, has labels already. But here for this picture, you could have students use the arrows. and they can label what you know what layer of earth is this so then you could have students label the different layers you can also bring in pictures from Google image search, so you don't have to use the gallery here. Um, you can go to insert, and then you have, you can have the picture option, so you can insert different things there in your smart notebook. The next tab underneath is um, for inserting files, attaching files, so if you have any pieces of text or anything like that that you want to bring into a smart notebook file to highlight or annotate 
somehow. You can pull in those files that way. The fourth tab is just like the text effects and styles of text. So you can adjust how your text looks and you have some more options there um, than you do, than you see up here when you have the text selected. And then these are plugins. So we have some different plugins that you can use as well. There's an activity builder that I will talk about in the module that is smart board best practices. I'll tell you about a lesson activity builder. You can do a lesson recorder that will record every slide at, on its own, so each slide individually. So if you do the lesson recorder, it pops up and you'll click new recording and it will record your voice. And when you're done, you'll just click stop recording. So you could go through an entire math problem for a student. So you could write three plus four equals seven. And then stop recording and then play the recording And it's not going to give you the, the volume because I'm recording this screencast, so that volume won't go through, but it will have uh, your voice recorded as well. So that is a plugin that is helpful. So then um, there are some other, there's a GeoGebra plugin, there's a YouTube plugin that will insert YouTube videos right into your smart notebook file and then there's an image web search so that's how you can pull images without going out to a browser searching for a google image downloading it then inserting it you can go to this tab right here and you can click image web search and then that will let you search for an image if there isn't one in clip art and then you can search it does go through bing so if you're you know, a Google image search snob, um, which I know I prefer Google image search. So if you're not opposed to using Bing, this is a little easier option than going out searching and, and bringing that image back in. So those are some things just to get you started in Smart Notebook. And thank you for watching this video tutorial. Please go back to your module in Canvas and read the instructions for now how to complete the assignment to get your points.